Hello, my name is Michael Königsmann. I work for Keystar Technologies as an application specialist in technical marketing, looking after our, our test measurement portfolio for coherent optical communications. Today I'm going to show you our uh, optical modulation analyzer along with a transmitter side um, generating signals for 600G testing, uh, deploying 64 QAM, 64 gigabyte signals um, used for testing receivers and also testing transmitters. So the whole setup will be used to uh, characterize transmitter systems. On the transmitter side, we have a CW laser source that provides the carrier to an optical modulator, the optical multi-format transmitter from ID Photonics. Um, it contains a set of driver amplifiers, uh, a modulator and a format independent BIOS controller. On the electrical side, to drive this modulator, we have our arbitrary waveform generator, the M8196A. It's a 92 giga sample arbitrary waveform generator, uh, capable of generating signals in bandwidth of up, up to 32 gigahertz in each channel. So the electrical signal enters the uh, optical multi-format transmitter, and it, the modulated light leaves that output here and um, enters um, amplifier, a set of uh, couplers, and a filter to do some signal conditioning to the signal and uh, finally we can analyze it on our optical modulation analyzer site. To drive the uh, waveform generator we have a software called the Optical Modulation Generator software, which is specifically uh, tailored to um, generate optical signals for the coherent testing. Uh, the software itself is divided into several tabs. We have a tab that provides um, the waveform definition. Uh, we can select uh, different, wave, uh, different modulation schemes. We can select the um, uh, speed of the signal. We can uh, select what the data source is, if it's a PRBS or a pattern file or some advanced um, data pattern. Down here I see the selection of um, sources that I um, did. So right now I'm generating a PRBS 15 on X and another PRBS 15 on the Y polarization. Down on the right hand side we see a constellation diagram which is quite crowded right now but um, this gives us an overview on what kind of modulation scheme we would expect. Uh, the next tab allows me to define the pulse shaping of the signal. Right now I use a root raised cosine filtering, but also raised cosine, Gaussian filtering is possible. On the lower section here we see the time domain of these filters and also the frequency domain of these filters just for reference. So I'm going back to root raised cosine. Um, the next step I'm using is called the non-linear transfer, which allows me to pre-distort the signal to compensate for non-linearities in my uh, optical modulator. Right now, I use an arc sign that um, tries to compensate the modulator transfer function. In the corrections tab, I'm able to um, apply corrections that are already built inside the arbitrary waveform generator to get to a better signal quality. I can use uh, S-parameter de-embedding should I uh, have components inside my test setup that I would like to de-embed. I'm using this here um, to um, compensate for the uh, frequency response of my optical uh, transmitter. And I use the built-in characteristics of my uh, arbitrary waveform generator. Down here we see the frequency response that is applied or the correction that is applied to the signal uh, Above that, I'm able to control the skew and gain imbalances of the signal. And on the right hand side, again, there's a gain imbalance setting so I can individually amplify or attenuate the XY, uh, y, XQ, YI, and YQ components. On the basic setup page, I, uh, bas I have the access to um, turn on and off channels. I can assign channels to uh, specific XI, XQ, YI, YQ components and last but not least I'm able to control the uh, voltages, the output voltages of the arbitrary waveform generator. So it, the AWG is fully integrated in this software. Once I'm ready with my um, signal definition I simply send the data to the modules and the data is being calculated and downloaded to the arbitrary waveform generator.
From the transmitter side, the modulated signal enters our uh, N4391A, the optical modulation analyzer. This um, receiver system, this analyzer system consists of the coherent receiver uh, in these two boxes down here. The reason why we split it up into two pieces is to keep the electrical signals from the photoreceivers to the oscilloscopes as short as possible. There's an optical distribution between the primary test set, as we call it, to the secondary test set, where we have, again, another pair of photoreceivers providing the O to E conversion to, analyze, uh, to be analyzed by the oscilloscopes. Um, there's some synchronization between the two instruments with these blue cables here. There is a LAN connection on the back and um, a trigger line. That's all we need to synchronize the uh, two boxes um, to provide the um, analysis of optical signals. Here we look at the uh, graphical user interface of our optical modulation analyzer. Um, we currently look at the uh, QAM64 signal running at 64 uh, gigahertz symbol rate. It's a dual polarization signal. Um, down here we have a spectral view of the signal. Um, you see the uh, flatness of the signal uh, currently running with a span of 80 gigahertz. We can go all, all the way up to 125 gigahertz with this uh, version of the optical modulation analyzer, which comes in uh, basically two flavors, 4x33 gigahertz for analyzing signals up to 65 gigabaud and the 4x63 gigahertz that we have today here on this presentation uh, that is allowing us to analyze signals with up to two times 125 gigahertz of bandwidth. Uh, below the spectrum, we see uh, a dotted line. That's an um, adaptive equalizer running in the background, which compensates the frequency response, the residual frequency response of my setup. Um, in the picture below here, I can look at statistical representation of my signals. Um, I see the error vector magnitude in RMS and average and standard deviation. I see min and max values. I see the symbol rate of the signal. Um, I have uh, means to measure the XY imbalance. I can measure the frequency error that um, uh, appears between the transmit and the receive side. I measure the skew between the two polarizations, um, the skew inside the polarization. So we have the um, channel one skew, which is currently below uh, 50, picos uh, 50 femtoseconds. The same is for the uh, channel 2, the Y polarization. Again, we have in the order of 50 femtoseconds. And finally, I show the uh, Q factor of the signal um, to give you a better overview. Um, the OMA software allows the analysis of signals in various modulation uh, time domain or frequency domain. In this picture here, I show the EVM value over time. So if you want to do a long-term experiment, you can check or control the uh, error vector magnitude over a longer time to identify errors in the transmitter. On the right-hand side, I have, again, uh, in-depth analysis features for the channel one and channel two. So the Y, or X and Y polarization, again, error vector magnitude is reported, the gain imbalance, so the difference in amplitude for the I and Q. IQ offset is reported as well as the quadrature error. I can measure skew again here and the Q factor is now shown individually for the two uh, polarizations. In the picture below, I activated a bit error rate measurement. So it measures the actual bit error rate. It accumulates the errors since the measurement has been started. It uh, counts up the errors that we, we saw so far and the ones we uh, currently see in the acquisition of data. Um, we see the number of uncounted bits. If there is IQ delay, it is reported down here. Same is true for the uh, Y polarization. So we have uh, the polarization uh, inside of the bit error rate result as well as the overall bit error rate result of the complete data streams consisting of the two polarizations. On the left hand side finally uh, we have a screen that's called the optical signal summary pretty much similar to the statistics but 
without the statistical representation. So again, we see the simple rate, EVM, uh, XY imbalance, frequency error. Uh, the polarization type is reported down here, so we see if it is a dual polarization or single polarization signal. And again, the set of SKUs is reported down here. So as we have seen, the optical transmitter side as well as the optical receiver side provides very flexible and versatile analysis features for testing transmitters and also testing receivers um, for the 600 gigabit uh, evolution of optical, communi optical coherent communication systems.